once you you come up with a with a system, a structure, a plan that that you think is going to happen, and then you need to kind of see it through because you know if, I get it. You're you're four and five, but they still have a chance to 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 make a bowl game, and I think that. You know, a lot of these schools, um, coaches stick around a lot longer at 500. You almost like, expect that from from certain schools. Uh, uh, John Beeson here with us in studio on Golo and Wingo. I, I guess from a general standpoint, do you think he got enough time? We know Willie Taggart came into this one, turned things, you know, turned around and left Oregon very quickly to go here after leaving USF the year prior to that. But do you think this was enough time, even with how big of a failure a lot of the parts of this we heard had been? Well, I, I think that um, a lot of it is out of Coach Taggart's control. And what do I mean when I say that? Well, you look at North Carolina, two games last year, what Mac Brown's doing this year, unbelievable. You look at Louisville, two wins last year, what Scott Satterfield's doing, it's unbelievable. So it's not so much that um, that he had an opportunity to finish. I think two years is, is too soon. You know, last year the narrative was FSU has, has problems. You got to get guys to buy in. And, you know, right now with this whole Fair, fair Play Act – you know, saying that college players aren't professionals. Like, we're talking about it because it makes money, okay? Yeah. So let's call it what it is. They they are professionals. But, you know, you, you look at what these kids need to go through in terms of getting there. When you get recruited to a big-time university like Notre Dame, myself, Miami, you're a commodity. You, you are a professional. You can go anywhere in the world, considering college football, you know, the destinations in the U.S., but right. you're the best on the planet. And you sign up to play for Jimbo Fisher. And then he, he backdoors you. Now, I get it. That's the business side of it. Mm -hmm. But you think those kids were happy with whomever was going to come in that first year? That's why you saw the disconnect. It almost seemed like they weren't playing hard for him. He had lost a team last year when you watched the games. Because we know that Jimbo left the, the team with, with big-time recruiting classes. So... Um, if I were a player on that team, I would feel like, you know, I got duped a little bit. My coach right. just left me. John Beeson joining us in studio, our ACC analyst, giving us a straight talk brought to you by Straight Talk Wireless, everything for less, only at Walmart. And you're 100% right there because in announcing the uh, the firing and everybody's reports, hey, people weren't showing up. They were losing money. Let's not pretend like the business part right. of this wasn't a huge thing. So now to get Florida State back to where they've been for a long, long time, which is in that upper echelon, and they won a championship not too long ago, do they have the chops at this point to go and recruit a big name coach to come there, or is that going to be a problem for them? Well, that that's the issue. And again, you know, you, that separates Florida State from this. When they hired Jimbo in 2010, you talk about your rival, Florida. Florida was was eight and five. Georgia was six and seven, and Clemson, good old Dabo, yeah, six and seven. So now you talk about you you get a, you get this great job, you're Jimbo Fisher, and the competition in the South in the hotbed is nobody really. Now. Florida's rolling. We know the machine that is Clemson. Correct. You know, shout out Dabo for doing an outstanding job and keeping it going, which is, is extremely impressive. And then, you know, Georgia the last few years have been right there. They're, they were competing for a national championship. They might this year, too. So we're talking to John Beeson and again, uh, the ACC Network uh, went to the U as well. So for both those schools. This used to be a game. This used to be a game everybody yes. looked at, and now it's not. A couple years ago, Miami was undefeated until Pittsburgh Clemson and then losing a bowl game. But other than that, it's four or five losses a year, which really is, should be unacceptable there. So teams like Miami, teams like Florida State, what's your thought process, especially as an alum there, of when this school can be back? It's one thing to get beat. It's nothing to give games away. You know, you talk about Miami, they've, they've lost seven games by, by less than one possession. It's, it's the most – now second most to North Carolina after the, the tough loss against Virginia uh, Saturday night. But, you know, you talk about the, the kicking goals for, for both teams. You know, in terms of overall makes this year percentage-wise, percentage FSU 125th, okay? FSU 125th, Miami's tied for second with 122, uh, ranked 122nd. So it's other issues. And when you watch Florida State, especially early in this, in this season, you know, out of the five home games, they're plus 16. Plus 16 at home. And then if you just, t just talk about the first quarter, they're plus 66. First in the ACC going into the FSU game. And number two in FBS. So how bad is it to, to fire your coach when you have moments right. of brilliance? Some teams are just bad. But when you lose close games, they say, hey, a play here, play there. Continue to take coaching. Continue to get guys to buy in because you're right there. 
Yeah, and I think that's the interesting part about this. And the tough part for a lot of people that look at this for, for Willie Taggart's side to say, all right, you look at other places that are going through this right now. You look at Scott Frost in Nebraska and the struggles that they've had in yeah. year two. Chip yeah. Kelly and what a disaster the start of the season at UCLA turned looked like for him and started to turn it around when you see some of those signs. But you see, and, and Beast, you brought this up, and I think this is the biggest point in all of this is when we see bad things happen in college football, when we see kids run out of programs, when we see shady dealings and recruiting, all of this done, it's because of stuff like this. Mm -hmm. Because the money is so demanding of coaches that it forces them to act in their own self-interest, and that ends up negatively affecting the kids. Because now whoever comes in next at Florida State, they're going to be looking and saying, all right, you just gave that last guy a year and a half to get this done. You signed him to a six-year deal with all that money, and you gave him a year and a half, so I've got to do whatever the hell I need to do, no matter who it hurts in this process, in order to get the job done, or else they're going to show me the door. And to me, we create these environments with moves like this that are all driven by the money and the butts that aren't in seats at Florida State. Yeah, it, it is about the bottom line, and it's unfortunate because you know most programs have not won national championships. But when you are a program that is accustomed to being in the top five, top ten, and competing for national championships, 500 seasons are not okay. And, and that's that's how you look at it. Most programs, hey, you win six, seven games, you go to a bowl, everyone's happy because right, they made a, right. made a little coin. Yeah. But you start dropping off those primetime games, it becomes a massive mm -hmm. issue. And that's unfortunate. What's up? Thank you so much for watching ESPN on YouTube. Don't forget to download the ESPN app. And if you want more premium content, which you do, make sure that you subscribe to ESPN+. Plus. See you soon.